This is how I save 30% of my grocery bill. I just eat rice and nothing else and I feel fine. Really? That's it? I'm just kidding, I'm not that extreme. Even though I try to save money on my grocery bill, that doesn't mean that I let it impact my health because we only have one body. Well, that's good. Now I'm listening. The first thing I do is create a shopping list. I used to use the iPhone notes, but it was pretty hard to edit and it also didn't properly sync with my boyfriend's phone and my phone. But I have found an amazing app to create shopping lists and it is called AnyList. With AnyList, I can import recipes from my favorite food blogs and I can plan out what I'm going to eat for the week. And before I add things to my shopping list, I also double check my pantry and my fridge to make sure that I don't double up on things and I don't end up with a thousand cans of chickpeas. Wait, you bought chickpeas? But I already bought chickpeas. No, you said we needed chickpeas, so I've got chickpeas. If I run out of something, I can add it to my shopping list by asking my Google Home. And let me show you how. Okay, Google, add strawberries to grocery list. All right, I added strawberries. After I have my list, I go through each ingredient one by one, and then I add which store I would like to buy it from. And that leads me to my next point, which is to shop at a few different stores if it's possible and if it's not too time consuming. So let's head on over to the shops and I'll tell you about my next tip. If I wanna buy essentials, I usually go to a discount grocer. In Australia, we have Aldi and here are some other examples below. If I want to buy fruits and veggies, I usually go to a fruit and veggie shop. Some things can be cheaper, for example, avocados, and sometimes there are wider varieties and wider ranges of things like mushrooms. And if I want Asian food, I try to shop at an Asian grocer. For example, things like kimchi and miso paste, I can usually get for cheaper and have better quality items. And for everything else, I shop at a big supermarket chain, which is called Woolworths in Australia. And if you're not in Australia, here are some other examples and similar stores below. I do recognize that time is also very important and that's why some people just prefer to shop at a big supermarket chain because there are a lot of variety of products and you can find most things there. If you do shop at the big supermarkets, here are some hacks to save money. Shop in the international aisles for things like spices. For example, this curry powder in the Indian section is 2.5 times cheaper than the curry powder in the spices section. And do you know what is also international? The like button. It is completely free no matter where you are in the world. So make sure you give this video a like and subscribe to this channel for more content about investing and personal finance. Another tip is to consider the shelf life of items. Honey is a natural product that never goes bad if it is stored properly. So I'm happy to purchase pretty big containers of honey because I know that it will last me a long time. Whoa, I can't believe I found some honey from 2021. That was so long ago. I wonder if it's still safe to eat. Also dried foods, for example, dry chickpeas and lentils are things that I'm happy to purchase in bulk because I know that they won't go bad. The next tip is to buy in bulk when something is on sale. When supermarkets have sales on items that I'm purchasing frequently, I like to buy these things in bulk. For example, almond milk was half price the other day, so I bought 10 bottles. A good way to plan your trip is to check out this app called the Half Price app, which can show you the groceries that are half price at Coles and Woolworths. And if you are in the US, you could use an app like Flip, Basket or My Grocery Deals. There are quite a few grocery items on Amazon, so if you know that you will be buying something frequently, then perhaps you can search this item on Amazon to see if you can get a better deal on it. Sometimes my soy milk is on sale on Amazon for 20% off, and when it is on sale for 20% off, then I use the subscribe and save feature to save an extra 10% off my purchase. I don't mind having to subscribe and purchase bigger quantities of it because I know that I'll be using it anyway and I'd like to lock in a good discount when I do see it. By the way, if you do purchase things online, I have an affiliate link down in my description below to Cash Rewards and Shopback. These are completely free websites that you can use to get free cash back on your online purchases and if you sign up with my links, you'll get some free money. Another way to save money is to buy bigger quantities. I like to buy big quantities of items if I know that I'll get use out of it because the bigger items are typically cheaper than the smaller items per unit. The next tip is to consider price markups for processed food. Typically, the more processed food is, the more expensive it is to buy. And typically food that is less processed, for example, fruits and vegetables are cheaper. Plus essential food items, for example, fruit, vegetables, meat, fish, rice, spices, milk, cream, cheese, eggs, 
are all GST free, which means that you aren't paying tax on these food items because they are seen as essential. We all want to save time. However, I think it is important to consider how much processed foods really cost us and whether they are healthy or not. For example, packaged popcorn is eight times the price of popcorn kernels that you can buy and pop yourself. Popcorn kernels are super easy to pop. You can put them in the microwave or you could also use a stove. And if you're obsessed with popcorn like I am, then you can even buy a popcorn machine. And you can also regulate the amount of butter, salt and sugar that you will have in your popcorn. Okay team, so we need to raise our profit margin. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna make the packages smaller, but don't worry because nobody ever notices. Where did all the food go? It's just air. Another example is pasta sauce. By buying pre-made pasta sauce, this typically costs you around two times the price than just buying tin tomatoes, garlic, herbs, and spices. Not only will you save more money by buying less processed foods, but it's also often healthier and also better for the planet as well. And to take it a step further, you could even look into organic foods. This is a personal decision Organic foods often cost more. However, they can be better for the planet and potentially have less chemicals in them. So it's up to you to decide whether this extra cost is worth it. Another easy way to save money on your grocery bill is to buy seasonal fruits and vegetables. And I have linked some seasonal fruit and vegetable guides down in the description below. The next tip is to find ways to keep your fruit and vegetables fresh by storing them properly. The way that your food likes to be stored all depends on the food item. For example, carrots like to be stored in an airtight container in the fridge. And onion likes to be stored in a cool, dark place away from the fridge. And I have linked some resources down in the description below if you would like to learn more about how to store your food properly in order to prolong their life. Another option is to freeze your food in order to prolong their life even more. Personally, I like to store my bread in the freezer. Bread typically lasts around one week in the fridge. However, when it is in the freezer, this can increase its lifespan to up to six months. Another way to save money is to consider buying home brand or store branded foods instead of branded food items. Most of the time, I really cannot tell the difference between home brand and branded food. A good way to work out which item is cheaper in the supermarket is to look at the price per unit. But I do like to check the list of ingredients just to compare and make sure that they are quite similar. Another tip is to use a loyalty card when you are shopping at a supermarket. My supermarket loyalty card saves me around $10 per $2,000 that I spend, which is roughly 0.5% of my shopping. Another way to save money on your grocery bill is to use discounted gift cards. I get access to discounted gift cards through my electricity provider and also through my car insurance provider. There are plenty of companies that do have these discount centers and it's not something that is common knowledge. So it's definitely worth checking out to see if your insurance provider or your electricity provider allows you to get access to a discounted gift card center. By using the Woolworths gift cards, I'm able to save 3% of my shopping, which saves me around $500 per year. The key takeaway is when you are looking to lower your food bill is to get organized upfront. Create a shopping list and make a plan for what you would like to buy. Try to buy less processed foods because they are typically cheaper. You don't need to overcomplicate it and make everything from scratch. Try to find a balance. It's really difficult to make a return from the stock market of from 20 to 50%. However, being able to save 20 to 50% of your grocery bill is doable. When you are buying in bulk, you're buying things on sale and you're making sure that you're buying things that you will actually need. Give this video a like and subscribe to this YouTube channel and write me a comment below with the word avocado in it just so I know who watched this video all the way through. Thank you, see ya.